nerves, still no nail net. Today I have 50 of the spookiest urban legends from every state. Disclaimer right off the bat, my teenager is in the other room. She is eating her breakfast and doing all kinds of other pretty noisy things, so there might be some background noise. I'm going to pop some cinnamon gum in my mouth before we get into these urban legends. You know we gotta do some channel hygiene. If you're new here, welcome to my nonsense. If you're old here, welcome back, OGs. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. If you're old here, go double check and make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like if you like. Leave a comment. It could be anything related to the video or it can just be a hello. A few emojis. I think I just clicked. I did. I just clicked. Hit the notification bell. And as always, I'll link my tip jars down below in the description box. No pressure whatsoever. But every dollar, two dollars, five dollars, everything helps. That is what allows me to continue to make content. Also, I will link my Patreon down below. <laughs> is she cooking? She never cooks. She might be cooking something. So, yes, my Patreon is now linked down below in the description box. Would love to have you over there. So this is 50 of the spookiest urban legends from every state by Taylor Markarian, updated October 4th, 2023. So this is pretty new. And it is at Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest. Whether you dismiss urban legends as children lore, children's lore, or believe they're based on fact, these 50 tales will send shivers up your spine. This will probably be a few parts because 50. 50 is a lot. And they're, I'm guessing, alphabetical, but we'll see. No matter where in the United States you're from, your home state is sure to have its share of urban legends, urban myths. These scary stories aren't just for Halloween, they're whispered between campers passed down from the town, from town to town, or reserved for nights when the power goes out, or they're told ASMR style on YouTube. Urban legends may be spooky stories, but they aren't necessarily ghost stories. They could have happened to someone you know, a relative or a friend. They are the stories that make you do a double take when you walk past abandoned places, or make you check to make sure your door is locked when you're home alone. Be careful next time you're driving the back roads of America. You never know what scary urban legends you might encounter. So in the comments, if you know what your state's urban legend is, go ahead and drop it. If you're not in the United States, what what's your urban legend in your town? Or in your state? Or in your country? Okay, I think it is going to be <clears throat> in... Uh, We have Alabama. The legend of Hug and Molly. Hug and Molly. It's clearly a tool used by parents to get their children to obey the rules. The story, native to Abbeville, tells of a phantom woman who appears to children if they stay out late at night. She grips the lingering child tightly and screams in their ear. She's not meant to cause death. Just one heck of a fright. It sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. Alaska, we have the Kualua... Kalupalik. Kalupalik. The Kalupalik. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Is an Inuit version of a mermaid or a siren. Calls with a hum to children who are wandering too close to the seashore and then takes them away in her baby pouch. The greenish woman-like creature will never return a child once taken into the depths. Sounds like a good way to convince kids not to go in the water, if you ask us. I read a parenting book. I think it was Hunt Gather Parent. It might have been in that one. Either way, 
it talked about like these kind of you know these ways to scare your kids so that and that they've been used for centuries to, to tell kids like not to do something that is dangerous you know because it makes more sense to the kid that there's a boogeyman out there than it is like well for safety purposes like that doesn't really get to a kid so for hundreds and hundreds of years we've had these like fake monsters it works great for some kids maybe some kids can't handle it you know your own kids but I'm a big fan of the boogeyman <clears throat> Arizona Slaughterhouse Canyon also known as Luana's Canyon the urban legend of the Slaughterhouse Canyon tells the gruesome tale of a 19th century gold miner who failed to come home to his family one night Without his earnings, the mother and her children couldn't buy food and began to starve. When she couldn't stand it any longer, the wife chopped the kids into pieces and tossed them into a nearby river and died of despair. Her cries can still be heard echoing through the canyon. Yikes. The Gurdon Light. Gurdon Light. This is Arkansas, the Gurdon Light. Like many urban legends, the story of the Gurdon Light has several variations. In one, a railroad worker was hit by a train and decapitated. His spirit can still be seen today, searching for his lost light. In another, the railroad worker bore a violent grudge against his boss who had fired him. He murdered his former employer with a railroad spike, and the victim now wanders the tracks. While the Gurdon light is well documented, no one has been able to offer an explanation as to what it really is. Okay. Charman of San Antonio Creek. Per local lore, a father and son were trapped in a horrible fire. The father perished, and before he could, before help could arrive, the traumatized son lost his mind. He skinned his father and then ran into the forest. Now, known forever as Charman, this black and burned body is said to attack motorists on Creek Road in Ojai as he seeks more human skins. He's a skin collector. Colorado. The Ridge Home Asylum. The Ridge Home Asylum was a real fa facility that opened in Arvada in 1912, but it's become an urban legend because of its history. It reportedly housed patients who were horribly mistreated some of whom weren't even mentally incapable, but just had been forsaken by their families. Terrifying. That, that's terrifying. Though it was demolished in 2004, people say they can still hear screams and see apparitions of former patients on the grounds. Asylums are terrifying. Asylums from back in the day, still they are, but back in the day when there was no regulations, and your husband could just say, oh, she has hysteria. Take her away so I can be with my mistress. They would do it. Um, what happened to you in there was nobody's concern. Nobody cared. Dudley Town, Connecticut. The misfortunes that have occurred in Dudley Town starting in the 1700s are so terrible and numerous that its nickname is Village of the Damned. Now completely deserted town is said to have been home to many suicides. Eh, can't say that word. Disappearances and even demonic activity that has given rise to several urban legends. It is believed that the founders of the village and by extension the village itself are Fort Delaware. Prisoner camp during the Civil War. Fort Delaware in Delaware City has ultimately home to more is ultimately home to more than thirty thousand Confederate soldier inmates. Was a few thousand who died before they could leave the Union Fort are said to still haunt the area. Captain Tony's of Florida. Since 1852, Captain Tony's, the oldest saloon in Key West, has been known to be haunted. 
door slam for no apparent reason, and there are inexplicable banging noises and frequent ghostly visitations. Perhaps that because it's the site of the town's original morgue and was built around a tree that the town once used for hanging pirates. The Song of the Cell, Georgia. The Song of the Cell. As urban legend goes, 1848, Alec and his wife Betsy, both slaves, were in their home one night when their master, drunk and belligerent, crashed open the door. He attempted to attack Betsy, but Alec fought him off under, undeterred. The master chased Alec up a ladder into a loft. As the struggle continued, the master lost his balance, fell out of the loft, and perished. Even though Alec turned himself into the sheriff the next morning, explaining what had happened to his self-defense, he was still charged with murder. Par for the course in Annabellum South. Alec was imprisoned in the old in the old Lawrenceville jail and later executed for the unjustly crime. People say they can still hear his sorrowful song traveling through the walls of the old jail. Paramore. He has the right to haunt whoever he feels like haunting. Hawaii Pali Highway. Pali Pali, the Hawaiian volcano goddess, has many myths attached to her name. One tells of her ill-fated union with the demigod Kamupua, who was half pig, half human. The two supernatural beings had ter a terrible breakup, agreeing to never see each other again. That's why, as urban legend has it, if you carry pork with you when you travel over Pali Highway in Oahu, your car will come to an inexplicable halt. Next time you're in the area, we advise sticking to chicken. Idaho. The Water Babies of Massacre Rocks. This sounds... Obviously, all these are triggers because you never know what kind of horror is going to trigger somebody. But <clears throat> This urban legend is about starvation and infanticide. So if you're squeamish, you may want to skip ahead. When famine hit the local area of Pocatello, mothers resorted to drowning babies in the river instead of letting them starve. It is said those babies turned into fish-like imps whose mission was to trick and even murder people. Illinois Bachelor's Grove Cemetery, often referred to as one of the most haunted graveyards in America. This 82-plot cemetery is known as the home of many phantom sightings. People who have visited the site have seen numerous inexplicable illusions from a ghostly to an ephemeral white farmhouse. Indiana, the 100 Steps Cemetery. If you visit this cemetery in this town of Brazil and climb the 100 steps to total darkness of the night, Urban Legend has it that you'll see the ghost of the original caretaker appear before you on the top of the hill. Apparently, he will give you a preview of what your own death Stony Hollow Road, Iowa. As the saying goes, a woman scorned is not someone you want to mess with. Lucinda of the town of Burlington is no different. Legend says that when her fiancé failed to meet her, there I know this one. I didn't know it was Iowa. Legend says that when her fiancé failed to meet her there, as one promised night, she threw herself off the bluffs along Stony Hollow Road ever since her ghost has appeared to countless people. What's much worse... If she leaves a rose at your feet, you're destined to die within 24 hours, as the story goes. Molly's Hollow, Kansas. Urban legend of Molly's Hollow speaks to the country's racist history. As the legend goes, when local townsfolk found out that Molly, the African-American woman, was involved with a white man, she was lynched. People claim her spirit is still there screaming at night. Hogan's Fountain, Kentucky. In Cherokee Park, you'll find Hogan's Fountain, which features a statue of Pan, the pastoral yet devious Greek god. At every full moon, some versions say that every night at midnight, the figure of Pan wanders the park, causing mischief for passerbys. The Carter Brothers of Louisiana. 
Back in the early 1930s, a young woman escaped from the home of the Carter brothers in New Orleans with slash marks on her wrist. She told the police the brothers were feeding off of her blood. Cops stormed the French Quarter residence where they found more young women in similar states. Their blood draining from their bodies. The brothers, now thought to be vampires, were captured and executed, only for it to be discovered years later that their crypts were empty. Like, really? Did, did, did that really happen? Like, were their crypts empty? I need to know. Um, Maine, Sequin, Sequin Island Lighthouse, Sequin. Like many urban legends, the, the one in Maine has to do with isolation. As legend has it, in the 1800s, the caretaker of Sequin Island Lighthouse and his wife were the only two living on the tiny spit of land. They naturally grew increasingly bored and isolated. The caretaker bought a piano so his wife could play it and keep them both entertained, but she only knew one song. The insufferable repetition of the same tune combined with severe isolation drove the husband mad. He took an axe, chopped the piano and wife into bits, and then off himself. Big Liz and the Greenbrier Swamp. Maryland. Big Liz and the Greenbrier Swamp. During the Civil War, Big Liz and very large, a very large woman was a slave who became a spy for the Union troops. But her espionage was found out by her master, who decided to enact revenge. Urban legend says that he took Big Liz to Greenbrier Swamp so she could help him bury a treasure. Big Liz dug the hole and was subsequently decapitated by her evil master, who threw her body into the grave. She had just unwittingly dug for herself. It is said that if you travel to that spot during the dead of night, you will see her spirit there attempting to lure you into the murky swamp. Massachusetts. I think we're going to get through all of them in one video. The Ghost of Sheriff George Corbin. When you think of haunted locales and birthplaces of urban legends in the urban in the United States, Salem is no doubt one of the top places that comes to mind. A key character in the Salem Witch Trials, Sheriff Corwin, was the most infamous and brutal when it came to interrogating and handling accused witches. He earned himself the nickname The Strangler for his torturous methods. A building called the Joshua Ward House now stands atop the land where Corwin lived and died, and many people see They've seen him in windows or felt his hands pressing down around their necks when they're inside the space. Yikes. A little sippy sip. Michigan. <clears throat> the Nain Rouge. N A I N, the Nain Rouge. This is one of the urban legends still recognized today. Celebrated by the people of Detroit every year, they say there's a devilish creature known as the Nain Rouge, French for Red Dwarf, who causes mayhem in the city. He's thought to be seen when disaster is about to strike, and even said to be the reason for Cadillac Company's downfall in the city. The Wendigo? Minnesota, the Wendigo. The Wendigo is a creature of Native American folklore that is thought to be the result of cannibalism. will turn into a wendigo, a fang-bearing creature that is tall, skeletal, and hairy if they resort to eating another human being. If you fall prey to the glowing eyes and snake-like tongue of the wendigo, or is it just an urban legend? The Witch of Yazoo, Mississippi. When living on the Yazoo River, an old woman allegedly lures boatsmen to their deaths with her magic. One day, the local sheriff chased her into a swamp and as she drowned in quicksand, she put a curse upon the town. In 20 years, she said, she would return to set the city aflame. Early in 1904, the city was hit with a massive fire, believed to be the work of the witch. The next day, when people went to visit her grave at Glenwood Cemetery, they saw that the chain links around her grave had been broken, or so, or so urban legend goes. <clears throat> the Landers Theater. Landers Theater, 
Missouri. And Springfield is supposedly beyond haunted. From fires to stabbings to accidental deaths, this theater has seen it all and has many urban legends to tell. Locals and performers have alleged that they've seen ghosts and people believed it perished, including the janitor who was said to have died during the 1920 fire. The Haunting of Chico Hot Springs Hotel, Montana, Chico Hot Springs Hotel. Mysterious Lady in White supposedly roams the corridors of Chico Hot Springs Hotel in prey, scaring guests and staff members. People have reportedly seen the ghost of a woman in white many times, leading them into room 340 only to find an empty rocking chair swaying back and forth. Her rocking chair is sometimes found in other rooms as well, always facing the window, no matter the position that the person last left it in. Or have we thought about not having that lawn chair, that, I mean, that rocking chair there anymore? Nebraska, the Hatchet House. Urban legend of the Hatchet House of Portal reminds us of the scary ghost stories we used to tell each other at camp. As the legend goes, a school teacher from long ago went insane and decapitated all her students in one room schoolhouse. Afterwards, she placed their heads in respective desks and took their hearts to a nearby bridge, throwing their organs in the water. People say you can still hear the hearts beating if you cross it, hence the name Heartbeat Bridge. Nevada Aliens at Area 51, publicly known as the place where military tests out some of its most advanced weapons and technology. Conspiracy theorists and urban legend diehards suspect that it's also where the U.S. government stashes UFOs. It doesn't want us knowing about. Um, they've already, it's weird as it sounds, this is not even an urban legend anymore. They've, they've um, done conferences about this now. Okay. The Legend of Chakorua, New Hampshire. The Legend of Chakorua. Mount Chakorua was named after a Native American chief who lived in the early 1700s. Legend has it that he left his son with the Campbell family while he went away on a tribal business. While under the family's care, the son died, perhaps accidentally, perhaps not, to exact revenge, Chief Chakorua killed the white man's wife and children, and then the surviving Campbell chased Chakarua to a top of a mountain and shot him dead, but not before the chief had placed a terrible curse upon the land. It is said that the land, now known as Chakarua Lake Conservancy, will inflict suffering and death on anyone who tries to live there or drink from its rivers. New Jersey, the ghost boy of Clinton Road. The Ghost Boy of Clinton Road. The ghost of a young boy is said to reside beneath one of the bridges on this road in Passaic County in northern New Jersey, according to legend. He's quite helpful, not to mention honest. If you drop a coin into the water, he will return it to you within 24 hours. It's said to be a rite of passage for local teens to test it out. Okay, he's cool. He's not scary. UFO crash at Roswell, New Mexico. 1947, something really, really big crashed on a ranch of Northwest Roswell. Members of the US military quickly came to retrieve the debris, which led some to believe that it was something they wanted to cover up, a UFO perhaps. Adding to the mystery, Jesse Marcel Jr., son of the military officers charged with clearing the site, later described the debris he saw his father bring home as being made of lead foil with eye beams. According to Roswell UFO Museum, he called the writing the eye beams as purple. Strange. Never saw anything like it. Different geometric shapes, leaves, and circles. The U.S. government maintains it was a weather balloon that crashed, but urban legend tells a different story. Cropsy, I've heard about Cropsy before. New York, The Legend of Cropsy. There's a little documentary about Cropsy out there. I remember watching it. Staten Island's Cropsy has been a local legend for decades, gaining the national attention when documentary of the same name was released. Okay, that's the documentary I'm talking about. 
The story goes that Cropsey had a hook for a hand and was patient at Willow Bri- and was a patient at Willowbrook State School. He would come out late at night to hunt and chase local kids with his hook hand. In truth, a series of child murders did take place in that area of Staten Island in the 70s and 80s. North Carolina, the Beast of Bladenboro. Many regions in the United States had their own urban legends of a story about a mutant creature in the woods who kills viciously and indiscriminately. In North Carolina, it's the Beast of Bladenboro, described by locals as a panther-like bloodthirsty killer lurking in the darkness. It is said to have attacked numerous dogs and people. Watch your back. North Dakota, the Minnewashatu. Next time you're on the banks of Missouri River in North Dakota, keep an eye out for the Minnewashatu of North Dakota, a giant, red, hairy monster with sharp spikes along its back and a horn and only one eye. If you look at it, blindness, insanity, and even death are said soon to follow. So on second thought, don't keep an eye out for it. Ohio Gore Orphanage. In the 1800s, there was a deadly fire at an aptly named Gore Orphanage in Lorain County. Tragically, every single orphan in the institution perished. Locals say if you visit the site where the orphanage stood, you can still see the ghosts of the dead children and hear them playing or smell burning flesh. Oklahoma, where the wind comes racing down the plane. I had to do a musical. In junior high. Oklahoma. Okay. Shaman's portal. People have allegedly disappeared into thin air upon setting foot in these dunes in beaver sands, also known as Oklahoma's Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that a UFO crashed here, opening the door to another world. Oregon, the bandage man. The ghost of a man who was supposedly chopped into bits at a sawmill terrifies Oregon residents and urban legend believers to this day. They call him the bandage man because while his entire body is wrapped in bloody bandages, so he's almost like a mummy, like, you know. Mostly he's said to attack people who drive through the park and park their cars in Cannon Beach, my favorite beach. That's my favorite beach, what? Yikes. Pennsylvania Eastern State Penitentiary. The Eastern State Penitentiary of Pennsylvania is a real place that was shut down due to its exceptional cruelty towards inmates. Each cell and chamber has its own set of hauntings and terrible tales, and walking through it is supposed to feel like walking through the pit of hell itself. If you're the type who likes to experience the macabre, you can take a tour on Halloween. You must sign a liability waiver before entering. fingernail freddy of rhode island it sounds familiar because the rhode island legend of fingernail freddy is supposedly the inspiration for nightmare nightmare on elm street in this version fingernail freddy is a wild woodsman with insanely long fingernails who comes out to attack attack campers with his talons they should remake a freddy like the original fingernail freddy Speaking of which, have you seen the preview for that Five Nights at Freddy's? It looks okay. I might want to watch it. Legend of Lavinia Fisher, South Carolina. South Carolina. Known as America's first female serial killer, Lavinia Fisher was certainly not dainty about her kills. In the 1800s, she and her husband John ran an inn where they had the unfortunate habit of killing off many of their guests. What an unfortunate habit. They would poison them, and then when the poor person had fallen asleep, drop them down a trapdoor. One victim managed to escape, and the two were found, resulting in their execution. Now people say the ghost of Lavinia Fisher haunts the Charleston jail where she was executed. What a crazy couple. South Dakota, Walking Sam. Walking Sam of South Dakota is a bit like the notorious figure from the Slenderman video games. An unnaturally tall, skinny, and creepy character Who's cross, those who cross paths are induced with to commit sue, eh, you know, 
And his favorite prey is young teens. I don't like that. Yuck. Walking Sam. Um, a skinned Tom of Tennessee. A skinned Tom of Tennessee. As the story goes, in the 1920s, a young man named Tom once took his lady friend to the local lover's lane. He didn't know it, but the woman he was enamored with was in fact married. Her husband found the two canoodling in their car the wife and skin Tom alive. Folks say Tom still hangs around Lover's Lane ready to kill those who dare to commit adultery. I feel like there's so many stor horror stories that involve Lover's Lane. The Lechuza, Texas, the Lechuza, South Texas. After you've had a beer or two, you'll need to be on the lookout for Lechuza. Depending on the version of this urban legend being told, this incredibly large owl is either a bruja's or a familiar woman by day, bird by night. Her child was killed by a drunk, so she is on the prowl looking to take revenge on bar patrons stumbling out onto the street after closing time. Uh, the Curse of Escalante Petrified Forest, Utah. The Curse of Escalante Petrified Forest. Visitors to Escalante Petrified Forest in the Black Hills of Utah are cautioned to leave what they feel, what they find behind. Legend has it that anyone who there, I think there's a movie like this. Legend has it. No, no, no. A thread. I found this on a Reddit thread one time years ago. Legend has it that anyone who takes so much as a rack or a piece of wood will suffer intense misfortune, car accidents, broken bones, and even job loss are said to befall in those who dared to ignore the warning. No, 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 no. This was on Dead to Me. This was on Dead to Me where he took something from that forest. He wasn't supposed to. You're not supposed to take anything from that forest. And he, somebody on Dead to Me did. And then that's why they were cursed. They felt like that, shoot, like now this is the curse because I took it. Brattleboro, Battleboro, Battleboro Retreat Tower, Vermont. Built as part of an insane asylum in the late 1800s, the Battleboro Retreat Tower was soon closed off after a number of patients supposedly committed suicide by flinging themselves from the top. The tower remains standing today, and people say that if you dare to visit, you'll see ghosts plunging to their deaths over and over, like an old tape replaying itself. Bunny Man Bridge, the Bunny Man Bridge of Virginia. As the story goes, in 1904, some of the most dangerous patients from the insane asylum in Clifton, Virginia, were being moved to a prison when the bus crashed on Fairfax Station Bridge. The inmates attempted to escape, but only one was successful. He left a trail of dead, skinned, and half-eaten rabbits hanging from the bridge. That was the scene of the crash. Then on Halloween night of that very same year, several teens hanging out under the bridge were attacked at the stroke of midnight and met with the same fate as the bunny. The Bunny Man Bridge. Maltby's 13 Steps to Hell. Washington. In Maltby Cemetery in Maltby, you'll find a set of 13 steps leading to an underground crypt. Urban legend has it that anyone who makes the regrettable decision to climb down those steps will be met with a vision of hell so terrifying it will drive them to insanity. I'm just so curious, like, if somebody, if somebody set you right at the top of those stairs and was like, that legend has it, like, would you go down there? Could you resist? Just like, what? Like, okay, I'm going to do it. Or would you just be like, hell no, absolutely no effing way. <clears throat> okay, we've only got a few left now. Which is good because it's getting kind of later in the morning and I'm sure my toddler is about to come down these stairs. He's the urban legend of this house. Terrifying. West Virginia, the Mothman. Yes, this is the same Mothman from the movie The Mothman Prophecies. The final scene of that movie is a retelling of a take on an event which actually happened in 1967. The silver bridge that connects Point Pleasant, West Virginia with 
Gallipolis, Ohio collapsed at the height of rushing hour, killing 46 people. According to legend, it was the Mothman, the great bringer of death, who caused the accident. Wisconsin, the bloody headstone at Riverside Cemetery. Do I know this one? Urban legend tells of a local woman by the name of Kate Blood Fitting Wright, who is said to have killed her husband and three children, after which she committed sewer slide. Her headstone at Riverside Cemetery in Appleton allegedly drips with blood every full moon. Though if you do visit, glance at her headstone will quickly debunk the legend. She was outlived by her husband and her only child, so somebody just totally pulled this out there behind. And then we have the last one, and I know this one very well. Um, I even posted a picture not that long ago of me on like a jackalope, um, kind of like jackalope thing at a bar in, it was in Austin, but jackalope is a urban legend from way out west. Up, uh, maybe it's all, is it supposed to be all over the west? But anyway, here it's listed as the urban legend of Wyoming. And I've spent a good amount of time in Wyoming as a child. The large bunny creature with antelope horns is well-known character in Wyoming's culture, history, landscape, and urban legends. Some people say they've most definitely seen it, while others shrug it off as a fairy tale. What do you think? I tend to think maybe a very small antelope can sometimes look like a jackalope. Or maybe if the, the antelope is going really fast, it's small, and it, then maybe it would look like a jackalope. Maybe that's where it came from. I don't know. I do love a jackalope. I love a good jackalope story, a good jackalope sighting, and I love to talk about jackalopes around people that don't know what a jackalope is, and they're like, that's a real thing? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So, anyways, let me know what your local... Um, urban legend is and if you are still there and you watched this whole almost 40 minute video all the way to the end I thank you very much I hope that you have a good rest of your day rest of your evening and a good night's sleep and I will see y'all real soon